Hi guys, today we are going to talk about the only four items you need to have a great LinkedIn profile. So if you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. So the four items, what are they? Picture, headline, experience, and education. Everything else you can put as a secondary. Wait, Jeff, you didn't talk about the summary. I didn't talk about the summary. This is absolutely the most critical component on your resume, but on your LinkedIn profile, people are skipping over it. It's long. If you want to have a summary, really condense it. And if you do want a longer one, you really just want to be highlighting that core piece in as short as possible because you really need to be thinking about what's going to show up in the summarized version on your desktop or mobile on LinkedIn. And that's a really good segue into, you know, there's a, just a few items before we get started that are really important to talk about. And, and one of them is the difference between desktop and mobile. They look different, they feel different, uh, and some components will show fully on the desktop and not on mobile and vice versa. So just get a look and feel for both. That's a good first step. Um, Second, it's not ABC, it's ABE. Always be editing. I edited mine this morning. I spend a lot of time on there, so I'm always editing and changing, and I changed my headline yesterday, and I even updated some of my past experience today. I just wanted to change the look and feel of it, and obviously I'm doing this, so I'm constantly thinking about it. Um, and third, make sure that your resume and LinkedIn profile that they match each other. Now, not the content, the content doesn't have to match, but the dates, the position titles, those things should match. And I have found such a broad sweeping inconsistency between those two items when I was recruiting at Google, and it's just something to keep in mind, keep them the same. So let's dive in. Obviously, I always wanna keep these as short as possible as I can for you guys, so picture. I thought a lot about how to really explain and describe this to everyone so I could simplify as much as possible. And the only analogy I could come up with is, imagine you're a Hollywood actor or actress and you're applying for a movie, you give a headshot, right? And it would look weird if you had a picture with your dog or with your significant other or with sunglasses on or in a car or it's fuzzy or it's cropped with <laughs> cropping out another person. Just take a picture of your head shoulders above, you can do a selfie, it's fine. Um, you can have a nice background, uh, not a junky background, but a nice background, but just really having that picture is such a critical component. And so, um, you know, people are like, oh, I don't wanna do this, you know, but it's such a basic item on your LinkedIn profile and you will hear from less people and attract less attention when you don't have a picture. So it's one of those items where I get it, you don't feel as though you should be judged based on your picture, but it will just help open doors. So it's something I strongly emphasize to do. And lastly, you don't have to be in business attire. Uh, that's not really a part of it if that's what you're trying to represent and you're in an industry like banking that tends to be very dressed up then I would maybe present yourself in that manner, but don't worry too much about being dressed up. It's not as important. Headline. This is something that every single article talking about LinkedIn will say is important. I think the one area where they're missing the mark a little bit is brevity. So the headline, again, this is a mobile to desktop difference. The desktop actually cuts it off, even though it's only 140 characters, where the mobile shows the entire headline. So I think you chop it down and you keep it short enough where even on the desktop, your headline is not getting cut off. So if you love your job, like you're a software engineer at Twitter, you say software engineer at Twitter. And it's that simple and you'll probably get contacted about like software engineer roles at other big tech companies. That's a great way to intro yourself. If you're looking for a job, then really you wanna have brevity again because that headline will get cut off. Looking for software engineer role in San Francisco or you can be more specific front end software engineer role or whatever, however you wanna define it, but make it short and sweet. And this is something that you can continue to tweak. But again, if you like your job, at your company and you're thinking you're gonna stay on that similar career path, 
I would keep it simple in that manner. Um, again, like I mentioned, I've changed mine constantly because I'm a constant work in progress these days. So experience. I'm actually going to spend the least amount of time on this one. All I can tell you is don't make it the same as the resume. Condense it. Make it a little bit shorter, a little bit sweeter, a little bit more strategic. You definitely want to highlight what you've done if you feel like that your role is not a clear role. Otherwise, you're really just focused in on a couple of accomplishments. And just remember, be as specific as possible and remember an audience that may not exa understand exactly what you've done. So just keep it down to a level where anybody could understand it, right? Um, the last one, education. For some reason, this isn't discussed. And I think having an education and having a bachelor's, master's, anything, um, it's great. And I hired people at Google who did not have a degree. The emphasis is not so much on having it, it's clarity. So a lot of people put education on their resume, uh, sorry, on their LinkedIn, but they're not, it's not really clear whether they actually graduated. If you didn't, please define the number of credits needed to complete. And remember, credits are different at every university, every college. So you really want to focus on how many credits per course or just talk about courses. I do think that this is one that's so critical because I saw people put confusing items on their LinkedIn and it, it has ended up costing people their jobs at places I've worked because it looked as though they were not being honest. So make sure this education piece is really clear. If you don't want to put your graduation dates, don't. I didn't put mine. Um, there are a number of other items that are important and I can do a follow-up video if people want it on some of the more nuancey items on your LinkedIn profile. We didn't talk about recommendations because they're not important. We didn't talk about skills because they're not important. If you get those other four items done really well, you are going to get reached out to. People are going to want to connect with you. Um, it's cool to build in all the other stuff. I love to see the nonprofit stuff too, but this video is really focusing on the core four basic items that are going to help you have success in LinkedIn. And I spend a lot of time on there. I see a lot of mistakes. So I hope you enjoyed this content. If you like, please like. If you have any comments, you want to see or hear anything else about LinkedIn, please let me know. Uh, have a great day and please subscribe. Thanks.